I be in service? Yes, sir. And what's the problem? Okay, sir, we'll send someone out right away. Thank you. IBM service? Yes, sir. And what's the problem? You're getting a tin log? Okay, sir, we'll send someone out right away. Thank you. Bye-bye. Unit 07, Unit 07, Metal Fab on a 3505, Code A. Repeat, Metal Fab on a 3505, Code A. KLK 263, clear. Say, this is Ralph. I got your message to call in. Yeah, it's uh, Metal Fab. They have a 3505. What's the problem? They've got a tin log. You think you can take it? Oh, sure. Sign me out for it then. All righty. See you later. Okay. Bye-bye. See anything new in that call? Let's review the significant parts of the CE's actions. Did you notice that the customer called in a specific trouble report? He said he has a tin log. This is a real help to everyone because now the customer, the dispatcher, and the CE can all talk the same language. After some experience, you will be able to remember specific logs and some of their common causes. Sometimes this can save you a trip for a part. In this case, the CE was close to the branch office, so he took a minute to get a part he thought might be causing the problem. Here is a very significant action. The CE is now benefiting from some of those design improvements I talked about earlier. He's using the subsystem CE panel to verify the error that was logged by the machine. The machine has already performed some of the CE's diagnosing for him. Here is another significant change. Because the documentation is tailored to the machine, the CE can use the error logout as an entry point to the maintenance library. After obtaining the error information, he has been directed to a section in the manual that contains procedures for isolating a trouble. These are called Maintenance Analysis Procedures, or MAPS for short. They are effective because the machine has already isolated the trouble to a few possibilities. The MAPS contain directions for further isolating the trouble. Also notice that the CE encountered little difficulty in correcting the failing part. The 3505B and the 3525 have been designed so that all replacements can be made quickly and easily. Another CE aid, the time display function of the CE panel, is used by the CE to verify that he has repaired the problem. Here is a feature I think you'll like. The CE is using a built-in vacuum cleaner to clean up the machine after the 01 call is complete. This is a very important aspect of the maintenance plan. There is no scheduled PM on this subsystem. Either the customer or the CE can clean up the machine whenever it needs it. The other parts of preventive maintenance, as you know it, have been taken care of by the design of the machines. I'm sure all of you have heard the old story about the CE that is talked into taking a call on a machine he was not trained on. He enters the customer's account, plunks his tool bag right next to the machine that is down and says, okay, where's the machine that's down? To keep you from being that CE and to minimize the amount of time you're going to spend on your first encounter kicking the tire, so to speak, here is your instructor to introduce you to the subsystem on film. Let's take the 3505B card reader first. To load it with cards, we put them in the file feed, face down, nine edge first. Then we push the start button. 
We should be in a ready condition, providing the covers are closed, the stackers are empty, and cards are fed down into the hopper. Here's where the operator recovery procedures are located, if you should ever need them. Now let's take a look at the card path. The top cover opens like this. And the cover interlock is here. We can override the interlock with an Allen wrench. To hand crank the machine, you simply turn this handle located behind the operator panel. The cards are fed from the vacuum assisted hopper by means of a friction drive roll. As soon as they pass through the throat, they are deflected down and continue feeding into the pre-read station. We can easily see this from the rear of the machine with the pre-read station open. At the end of the first feed cycle, the card stops here in the pre-read station. The card is fed out of the pre-read station by this eject roll. Operated by this eject magnet. Here is the reed station. The card passes through the reed station under control of these four feed rolls. Here is the reed head. Operating the eject magnet manually, we can hand crank the card through another card cycle. After it passes over the reed head, it enters the post reed station. This would be the end of another card feed cycle. Machines that do not have the selective stacker feature will not have this post read station and cards would continue to feed right into the stacker. This machine has a selective stacker feature, so the card is held in the post read station by vacuum, applied through these events under control of a solenoid. To feed the card out of the post read station, we energize the eject magnet. This feeds the card into one of the three stackers by the operation of one of these two select magnets. Inside the back cover is a cover interlock. Here is a power distribution panel and the power supplies are located in the base. The reader uses air operated switches and uses vacuum in the hopper. So naturally, we have air hoses and a device to blow the air and to create a vacuum. It is located here. Next to it, we have a built-in vacuum cleaner. By pulling this switch to the vacuum position, you can turn this blower into a vacuum cleaner to be used by you and the customer to clean the machine. In addition to the third stacker, the only other optional feature this machine can have is optical mark read. The amplifier cards for this feature are located here. The power sequencing circuits are located behind this panel. There are no interlocks on the front cover. The control unit for the subsystem is housed in the 3505B right here in this gate. This is gate A. You will always have board A1. You'll have board A2 if you have a punch attached and board B2 if you have a print feature installed on the punch. This is a CE's best friend, the CE panel. To help you operate the CE panel, there are templates available kept in this pocket which can be clipped to the panel. Now, if everything is put back together, the 3505B will run. Let's look at the 3525 card punch. This machine is very similar to the punch end of the 2540. The hopper is similar. Cards are put in face down, 12 edge first. The top cover opens like this. It is interlocked here, and again, we can override it with an Allen wrench. The card feed clutch here can be tripped here, and the punch hand cranked. Let's open the punch unit. This punch can have a reed station as an option. The reed station is located here. 
the length distribution unit for the reed station comes out easily. Notice that the first 40 fiber bundles are physically placed ahead of the last 40. These are the reed cells. Notice that they are also offset. The card would end up here after one card feed cycle. The punch aligners here position the card for punching, while these intermittent feed rolls are cammed open. Looking down into the machine, we can see where the card stops at the end of the second card feed cycle. It is between the intermittent feed rolls and a line for punching. The punch can also have a print feature as an option. This is the pre-print station. The card is aligned for printing by these card aligners. The print chain cartridge is under this ribbon. Magnetically selected feed rolls here and here feed the card through the print station. The rolls are driven by this stepper motor. After the third card feed cycle, the card ends up here, a line for printing just in front of the ribbon. The print chain cartridge can be removed easily by operating this lever and lifting the cartridge out. The cartridge is lubricated through this oil wick which is fed by a reservoir that contains a lifetime supply of oil. This is the hammer unit for the printer. Here is the punch unit die and stripper. Cards containing punch checks will be stacked in an air pocket located here with a correctly punch card on top of it. Let's not forget our built-in vacuum cleaner, which is located in the back of the machine. The front cover has no interlock. These gates contain controlling circuitry for the punch. The 3525 CE panel is here. That's about it. After buttoning up, we can hit the start key and it works. This film has been a quick trip around the subsystem. You will have an opportunity to review every point presented in this film later during the course. The maintenance library is written so the CE has all the information he needs for 95% of all calls in the one manual. Here the CE is obtaining unit and cause information from the manual. Naturally, the purpose of all this is to ensure more availability of the subsystem. When and if the machine fails, we want it up and running as fast as possible. You know, some of what we've been talking about is called the maintenance strategy. As a maintenance strategy evolves, so does an accompanying training strategy. In the case of the 3505B-3525 subsystem, it was decided that the training strategy should be tailored to the maintenance strategy. The result is this course. We're going to teach you how to fix this machine, and whatever you learn about how it works will be a side product. You may not fully grasp the importance of this yet, but let me try to prepare you. This course will seem more difficult at first, but I'm confident that as you progress through it, you will find that it really is a faster, better, and perhaps most important of all, a more interesting way to learn. Let me show you a little bit about the course. You'll receive a brief big picture introduction to each topic. You will then be instructed to analyze some simulated troubles. During this bug shooting time, you will be given some instruction on items we felt were not self-explanatory. You will also learn simply because you are CEs 
and CEs have a natural curiosity about machines they have to service. You will be given study questions to highlight what you should have learned from each bug. That's about it. This course is mostly bug shooting. Everything you'll need to know about the machine, you'll learn through shooting bugs. And while there won't be anyone around all the time to see that you really shoot each bug, I'm sure that your natural satisfaction in getting answers to machine problems will be motivation enough. Besides, you'll be getting quizzed periodically.